Book 39, M2, Entry into the Realm of Reality, Continued, M2, O, in the middle of the great tower containing the adornments of Barokana he saw one tower which was bigger than all the others and arrayed with adornments surpassing all the other towers. In that tower he saw a billion world universe, in which he saw a hundred million sets of four continents, with a hundred million Jambadvipas and a hundred million heavens of contentment. In those Jambadvipa continents he saw the enlightening being Mithraya being born in a lotus calyx, he also saw Mithraya taking seven steps as Indra and Brahma watched, looking over the ten directions, making the lion roar, showing all the stages of childhood, in the palace, out in the garden, setting out for omniscience, appearing to undertake ascetic practice, finally eating food, going to the site of enlightenment, conquering the devil, awakening to enlightenment, steadily gazing on the tree of enlightenment, being asked by Brahma to teach, and turning the will of the teaching, going into the celestial abodes, with various different manifestations of enlightening teaching, using various names of eras in different ways, with various different spans of life, various different arrays of gatherings, with various demonstrations of ways of purification of lands, carrying out various practices and vows, with various structures of teaching used as means to develop and mature all concerned, showing various distributions of relics and bases of maintaining the teachings. And everywhere there Sudhana perceived himself at Mithraya's feet. In all those assemblies, in all the manifestations of works, in the varieties of spans of life, by means of the knowledge based on clear recollection, standing on the ground of knowledge, sure to reach omniscience, Sudhana heard, from all the objects in all those towers, the nets of bells and chimes, the drums and songs, and so on, and from the beings therein, the thunder of inconceivable multitudes of voices. From some he heard of the variety of aspirations for enlightenment, from some, about the variety of offerings to Buddhas, from some, about the variety of arrays of Buddha lands, from some, about the infinite variety of teachings of Buddhas, thus he heard the voices of all the teachings as they had been expounded in the past. He also heard about setting out for omniscience, in such and such a land the enlightening being so and so aspired to enlightenment, heard such and such a teaching, was inspired by the spiritual benefactor so and so, went to such and such a congregation at the foot of the Buddha so and so in such and such a land in such and such an age, planted such and such roots of goodness, heard about such and such qualities of Buddhahood, undertook such and such a variety of vows with such and such an intention, will realize supreme perfect enlightenment in so many eons after having carried out practice for so many eons, will be named so and so, will live so long, in a Buddhaland. With such and such qualities, with such and such higher commitments, such and such guidance of beings, such and such a congregation of disciples, individual illuminates, and enlightening beings, the true teaching to last for so many ages after the death of the Buddha, with such and such benefits. He heard another voice saying that in such and such a world the enlightening being so and so makes so many hundreds of difficult sacrifices in the practice of transcendent giving, the enlightening being so and so keeps the precepts, cultivates tolerance, acquires vigor, attains meditations, engages in the investigation of wisdom, the enlightening being so and so, in search of truth, relinquishes kingship, wealth, family, hands and feet, eyes and head, and practices self-mortification by fire, the enlightening being so and so, advanced in the teaching of those who arrive at thusness, works as a spiritual preacher, giving the gift of religion, performs the service of religion, raises the banner of religion, beats the drum and blows the horn of religion, showers the rain of religion, preserves the teaching of the enlightened, adorns monuments to the enlightened, has images of Buddhas made, comforts beings, and guards the treasury of truth. He heard another voice say that the Buddha so and so now is in such and such a world, currently existing and expounding the teaching, with such and such an initiation, in such and such an assembly in such and such a land in such and such an age, with such and such a lifespan, with 
such and such a doctrine guiding people in such and such a way, realizing such and such vows. In this manner, from each object Sudhana heard articulations of an infinite variety of aspects of the teaching, and by listening to all those voices he heard those facets of the teaching with a mind flooded with joy. From some he got facets of mental command, from others, facets of commitment, tolerance, conduct, transcendence, higher perceptions, mystic knowledge, liberation, and concentration. He also saw measureless arrays of reflections in the mirrors, reflections of assemblies of Buddhas, circles of enlightening beings. Congregations of disciples, groups of self-illuminates, defiled lands, pure lands, defiled and pure lands, reflections of all Buddhas in one world, worlds with Buddhas, small worlds, large worlds, subtle worlds, gross worlds, worlds in the cosmic net of Indra, inverted worlds, level worlds, worlds of hells, animals, and ghosts, worlds full of celestials and humans. He also saw countless enlightening beings on the promenades or sitting on their seats, engaged in various activities. Some were walking around, some were doing spiritual exercises, some were practicing observation, some were projecting universal compassion, some were working on various sciences having to do with the welfare of the world, some were instructing, some were reciting, some were writing, some were asking questions, some were engaged in ripening conduct, concentration, and knowledge, some were undertaking vows. He saw webs of jewel lights coming from the pillars, some sapphire, some topaz, some ruby, some white, some crystal, some golden, some emerald, some diamond, some rainbow, some the colors of all lights, delightful to the body and mind, supremely pleasant to the eye. He also saw the golden statues of women and all the jewel statues with their hands extended. Downward, holding myriads of flowers, garlands, parasols, banners and pennants, incense and perfume, various jewels on gold strings, various pearl necklaces, garlands of various jewels, holding all kinds of ornaments in their hands. He saw some figures bowing, crowned with jewels, with steady gaze, palms joined, in gestures of respect. He also saw delicate clouds of pure water imbued with all fragrances coming from the pearl necklaces, and saw long streams flowing from the webs of strings of lapis lazuli. He also saw all the jewel parasols embellished with all kinds of ornaments, and he saw the inner chamber adorned with jewel bells, sets of chimes, silk streamers, strings of bells, slivers of jewels, and heaps of various gems. He saw countless superb red, blue, and white lotuses growing in the lotus ponds, some a foot across, some a fathom across, some as big as a wagon wheel, and in them he saw arrays of various figures, figures of women, men, boys, girls, Indra, Brahma, the world guardians, gods, dragons, goblins, cherubs, titans, birds, centaurs, serpents, sages, saints, and enlightening beings, bodies in the forms of all living beings, various in appearance joining their palms and bowing in gestures of respect. He also saw figures of Buddhas adorned with the 32 marks of great people, sitting in the lotus posture. Also, on the checkerboard lapis lazuli surface of the ground, he saw inconceivable reflections in each square, here he saw the reflection of a land, there the reflection of a Buddha. All the arrays of adornments in those towers he saw reflected in each of the squares. Also, in all the flowers, fruits, and buds of the jewel trees he saw golden busts of all kinds of beings, Buddhas, enlightening beings, gods, dragons, goblins, cherubs, titans, birds, serpents, indras, brahmas, the world guardians, human emperors, princes, grandees, ministers, women, men, boys, girls, monks, nuns, male and female devotees, some with flower garlands hanging from their hands, some with strings of jewels hanging from their hands, some holding all kinds of ornaments, some bowing with their palms joined and gaze steady, paying respect, some singing hymns of praise, some in trance, 
some with a golden luster, some with a silver luster, some with a frosty luster, some with a sapphire luster, some with a shining jewel luster, some shining with the colors of all jewels, some with a saffron luster, some shining like bodies of light, some with bodies adorned with the marks of greatness. From the crescents adorning the towers he saw reflections of countless moons, suns, stars, and planets emerge and illumine the ten directions. He also saw the walls of the palatial towers resplendent with checkerboards of all jewels, and in all of the jewel square he saw Mithraya carrying out all the practices of enlightening beings, as he had done while performing enlightening practice in the past, in one square he saw Mithraya giving away his head, in another, giving away clothing, in another, giving away his top knot jewel, in another, giving the crown jewel of truth, in another, giving away his teeth, in another, giving away his tongue, in another, giving away his ears and nose, in another, giving away his heart, in another giving away his marrow and flesh, in another, giving away his blood, in another, giving away his skin, in another, giving away his limbs, in another, giving away his body, in another, giving away his sons, daughters, and wife, in another, giving away heaps of jewels, in another, giving away village, town, city, and country, in another, giving away the continent, in another, giving away four continents, in another, giving away all powers of rulership, in another, giving away the throne, in another, giving away servants, in another, giving away the palace and harem, in another, giving away parks and retreats, in another, giving parasols, banners, and penance, in another, giving garlands and perfumes, in another, giving medicines, in another, giving all kinds of food and drink, in another, giving all kinds of implements, in another, giving all kinds of furniture, cushions, and shelters, in another, giving precious copper vessels, in another, giving excellent vehicles, in another, freeing those in bondage, in another, freeing the condemned, in another, giving medical care to the young, in another, showing the right path to those on the path of destruction, in another, navigating the rivers as a boatman, in another, as a wonder horse, rescuing people on the Isle of Demons in the ocean, in another, as a great seer, practicing the sciences, in another, as a ruler, leading people into the paths of righteous conduct, in another, as a physician, engaged in treating the sick, in another, serving his mother and father, in another, listening to spiritual benefactors, in another, in the form of a Buddhist disciple, engaged in teaching people, in another in the form of a self-illuminate, in another in the form of an enlightening being, in another in the form of a Buddha, engaged in teaching people, in another, manifesting existence as paragons of types of beings, developing beings to maturity, in another, as a religious preacher expounding experience of the teachings of Buddhas, reciting the teachings, reflecting deeply on them, decorating monuments of Buddhas, having statues of Buddhas made, enjoining people to honor the Buddhas, giving out perfumes, making all kinds of offerings to Buddhas, leading people into paths of actions based on virtuous ways, directing people to the precepts, to refuge in the Buddha, the teaching, and the community, to listening to the teaching, to discussion, recital, and profound contemplation of the teaching, sitting on the lion seat to talk of the teaching, revealing the enlightenment of Buddhas. Thus Sudhana saw Mithraya's practices of the six ways of transcendence over countless eons, projected from each of the squares of the checkerboard walls. In one tower he saw magical arrays of all the spiritual benefactors whom Mithraya attended, and he perceived himself in the presence of all those spiritual benefactors, being welcomed and told not to be weary, to behold this wonder of the enlightening being. So Sudhana saw these and other inconceivable projections of magnificent scenes from each of the towers and each object in the towers. By the power of unwavering mindfulness, by all-encompassing purity of vision, by unobstructed knowledge of observational skill, by attainment of control over the basis of knowledge of enlightening beings, 
standing on the ground of knowledge issuing from the perceptions of enlightening beings, he saw this whole endless manifestation of marvelous scenes. It was like someone asleep seeing various things in a dream, nice houses and mansions, charming villages, towns and cities, agreeable clothing, food and drink, or delightful performances of music, song and dance, or as one might see pleasant parks, gardens and retreats, trees, rivers, lotus ponds, and mountains, or perceive oneself together with family and friends, or as one might see the ocean, or the polar mountain, or the celestial abodes on the highest mountains, or the whole continent. Or perceive oneself to be many miles tall, in which case one would see one's house and surroundings as enormous, one sees all the elements arrayed together, as if it were daytime, and one does not know the length or brevity of the night, nor realize one is asleep. If one sees oneself in a pleasant situation, one's body will be at rest, one will be free from torpor and drowsiness, with all attachments removed, feeling great joy and bliss, it will seem to last long, a day, a week, a fortnight, a year, a century, or even more, and when one awakes, one will remember it all. In the same way Sudhana, by the power of the enlightening being, by the knowledge of the collection of dreams that constitutes the world, the notion of smallness gone from his mind, abiding in the immensely vast unobstructed perception of enlightening beings, with the mental scope of enlightening beings, his intellect having entered into the inconceivable wisdom of enlightening beings, saw the whole supernal manifestation, was perfectly aware of it, understood it, contemplated it, used it as a means, beheld it, and saw himself there. It was like the case of a dying man hovering in his final mental state, on the brink of the mental state immediately preceding rebirth, faced with the state of being which is caused by his actions, as a result of the accumulation of whatever actions he has done, he will see hell if he has done evil, or the state of animals, ghosts, or the underworld, and may see angry, abusive henchmen of the underworld carrying weapons, and hear the cries of lament and anger of the beings in hell. He will also see the great hells burning, blazing masses of flames, and will see the copper cauldrons and the tortures being carried out, and will perceive those undergoing them. He will also see and feel the pains of the burning of the fires of hell. But by accumulation of good actions one will see heaven, and will see the assemblies of gods and goddesses and all the magnificent arrays of heaven, one will see and experience the enjoyments of the parks, palaces, rivers, lotus ponds, mountains of jewels, and wish-fulfilling trees. At the end of one's life one will feel one has passed away from this world and been reborn in the next, even though one has not yet died, thus by the wonder of the mental realms caused by actions one will see and experience these events. In the same way Sudhana, by the wonder of the states caused by the actions of an enlightening being, saw that whole supernal manifestation of the Tower of Varokana. Just as a man possessed by a spirit sees various things, and tells of what he is asked about, in the same way Sudhana, by the power of knowledge of an enlightening being, saw all those arrays. Just as a man who has entered the abode of water spirits, by entering into the perception of water spirits, thinks a day or a week or a fortnight or a month or a year or a century has passed. Merely in his perception, and when leaving the perception of water spirits for the perception of human sees that j it was only a short time, in the same way, with the mindfulness of the perception of an enlightening being, by the power of Mithraya, in that short time Sudhana had the sense of the passage of billions of eons. There is a celestial mansion called Chamber of the Finest Ornaments of All Worlds, wherein the whole universe is seen by reflection, with all objects clearly defined, in the same way Sudhana saw all those arrays, unconfused, reflected in all the objects. Just as a monk in the trance of absorption in one of the points of totality is single-minded and undivided whether walking, standing still, sitting, or reclining, and sees and experiences the whole world through entry into the sphere of total absorption in whatever point of totality he is focused on, by the marvel of meditation, in the same way Sudhana saw all those arrays whatever object he immersed himself in. 
just as all the adornments of the cities of celestial musicians are visible in the sky, without constituting a barrier to anyone, just as human abodes within demonic abodes, each distinct within the demonic abodes, are visible according to the purity of the objects of desire, just as reflections of the worlds of the universe are seen in the ocean, just as a magician sees all forms and activities by the power of spells and drugs, in the same way Sudhana, by the inconceivable direction of the magic of the enlightening mystic knowledge of Mithraya, saw all those miraculous displays, by bringing forth the power of magic of knowledge of truth, by the power of mystic knowledge mastered by the enlightening being. Then the enlightening being Mithraya, entering the tower and relaxing his magical force, snapped his fingers and said to Sudhana, Arise. This is the nature of things, characterized by non-fixity, all. Things are stabilized by the knowledge of enlightening beings, thus they are inherently unreal, and are like illusions, dreams, reflections. Then, at a finger snap, Sudhana emerged from that trance and Mithraya said to him, did you see the miraculous display of the magical power of enlightening beings? Did you see the results of the power of enlightening beings' preparations for enlightenment? Did you see the creations of the vows and knowledge of enlightening beings? Did you see the practices and attainments of enlightening beings? Did you hear the enlightening beings' ways of emancipation? Did you see the infinity of adornments of Buddha lands? Did you see the excellence of the vows and expertise of Buddhas. Did you realize the inconceivability of the liberation of enlightening beings? Did you experience enlightening beings' bliss of absorption? Sudhana said, I saw, noble one, by the empowerment and spiritual force of the benefactor. And what is this liberation called? Mithraya said, This liberation is called the sanctum of supernal manifestations of unconfused recollection entering into knowledge of all objects of past, present, and future. And an enlightening being assured of enlightenment in one lifetime attains untold liberations like this. Sudhana said, Where has that magnificent display gone? Mithraya said, Where it came from? Sudhana said, Where did it come from? Mithraya said, It came from the effectuation of the magical power of knowledge of enlightening beings, and it resides in that very magical power. It does not go or come at all, it is not an aggregate or an accumulation, it is not uniform and unchangeable, it is not abiding or fixed in existence, it is not located in any place. It is like the network of clouds of the water spirits which do not appear from body or mind and yet are indeed seen in masses, by the mental power of the water spirits measureless clouds emerge, by the wonder of the realm of the water spirits. In the same way, those supernal manifestations are not internal or external, yet it is not that they are not seen, by the magical power of the enlightening being, and because of your own capacity. Just as the illusions of a magician manifesting illusory objects do not come from anywhere or go away, nor are they in transit, yet they appear by the power of spells and drugs, in the same way those supernal arrays have never gone or come, nor accumulated, but they appear by proper learning of the inconceivable magic of knowledge of enlightening beings, by mastery of knowledge empowered by past vows. Sudhana said, From how far away do you come? Mithraya said, In the state where there is no coming, the state of enlightening beings is the state of neither motion, nor stasis, the state of no support or abode, the state of no passing away or rebirth, the state neither static nor transient, the state of no stirring or arising, the state of no concern or attachment, the state of no deeds or fruition, the state of no origination or destruction, the state of no annihilation or eternity. Furthermore, great compassion is the state of enlightening beings, as they attend to sentient beings who can be guided, great kindness is the state of enlightening beings, as they rescue suffering beings, discipline is the state of enlightening beings, as they become reconstituted according to will, commitment is the state of enlightening beings, based on past vows, spiritual power is the state of enlightening beings. As they manifest all that is pleasant, non-doing is the state of enlightening beings, as they do not leave the presence of all Buddhas, neither grasping nor rejecting is the state of enlightening beings, 
as they are not obsessed with body or mind, wisdom and means is the state of enlightening beings, as they adapt to sentient beings, manifesting emanations is the state of enlightening beings, their bodies being equivalent to reflected images. And you ask how far away I come from, I come here from the village of Kuti in the territories of the Malata people, land of my birth. There is a gentleman there named Gopalaka, who guides people into the Buddha teachings, teaches the native people according to their capacities, and establishes family and relatives, priests and householders, in the great vehicle. Sudhana asked, what are the native lands of enlightening beings? Mathreya said, there are ten native lands of enlightening beings. What are they? The arousal of the aspiration for enlightenment is a native land of enlightening beings, causing one to be born in the family of enlightening beings. Strong will is a native land of enlightening beings, causing one to be born in the family of spiritual friends. The stages are a native land of enlightening beings, causing one to be born in the family of the transcendent ways. Carrying out vows is a native land of enlightening beings, causing one to be born in the family of sublime acts. Universal compassion is a native land of enlightening beings, causing one to be born in the house of means of salvation. Profound contemplation is a native land of enlightening beings, causing one to be born in the house of transcendent wisdom. The great vehicle is a native land of enlightening beings, causing one to be born in the house of skill in means. Educating sentient beings is a native land of enlightening beings, causing one to be born in the house of Buddhas. Knowledge and means is a native land of enlightening beings, causing one to be born in the house of tolerance of things as unoriginated. Practicing and realizing all truths is a native land of enlightening beings, causing one to be born in the house of all Buddhas of past, future, and present. Transcendent wisdom is the mother of enlightening beings, skill in means is the father of enlightening beings, transcendent generosity is the milk of enlightening beings, transcendent discipline is their nurse, transcendent tolerance is their adornment, transcendent vigor is what makes them grow, transcendent meditation purifies their practice, spiritual friends teach them, the elements of enlightenment are their companions, all enlightening beings are their siblings, the determination for enlightenment is their family, practice is the rule of their family, the stages are their residence, attainment of tolerance is birth in the family, carrying out vows is acquisition of the knowledge of the family, purity of conduct is following the rule of the family, promoting the great vehicle is preserving the continuity of the family. Consecration as one bound to attain Buddhahood in one life is princehood among spiritual kings, and the attainment of all who arrive at thusness is complete purification of the family. Thus the enlightening being has gone beyond the stage of the ignorant and has entered the certainty of enlightening beings, has been born in the family of Buddhas, has been established in the lineage of Buddhas, has become capable of perpetuating the three treasures, has become involved in protecting the family of enlightening beings, has become socially pure and impeccable, blameless among all people, has become well born in the highest family of Buddhas, the body a repository of great vows. Enlightening beings who have succeeded in being born in the family this way do not shrink away from existence in any world, because they realize all things are like reflections, they are not defiled by life in any state of existence, because they realize birth in all states of being is phantom-like, they are tireless in guiding and perfecting all beings, because they are aware all is selfless, they never cease taking care of all beings, because they embody universal love and compassion, they do not fear living through all ages, because they believe the mundane world is like a dream, they are not afflicted by the appearance of birth and death, because they realize the clusters of mental and physical elements are illusory, they are not injured in the midst of all objects, because they realize they are of the nature of the reality realm, they are not deluded by any of the states of the mundane world, because they have thoroughly realized they are like mirages, they are unaffected by any bedeviling objects because they are familiar with the illusoriness of all things, they are incapable of being deceived by any afflictions, because they have mastered the spiritual body, they reach their goal in all states of being, because they have attained control over becoming. With a body existing in all worlds, in forms like all beings, with different powers, 
with distinct forms of speech like those of all beings, with modes of conduct like those approved by all beings, with adaptations to the world as extensive as the precepts of all beings, appearing to be born in families consonant with all kinds of purity, by entries into the perceptions and ideas of all beings through engagement in activity, by powers of physical manifestation equal to the creations of vows of all enlightening beings, I pervade all universes, and arrived here in the south, in the village of Kuta in the Malata region, in order to develop to maturity those who carried out the same practices as I in the past but have lost the aspiration for enlightenment, and to manifest birth on this continent, to guide parents and relatives born in the priestly caste, and to generate the family of enlightened ones so as to free them from the pride and conceit of the superiority of the priestly caste. Here in the South, by that means guiding beings according to their mentalities and according to their capacity for being taught, I live in this tower containing the adornments of Varokana. When I have passed away from here, I will manifest birth into Shita, the celestial abode of happiness and contentment, in order to adapt to beings according to mentality, and to mature the celestials of that heaven engaged in the same practice, to manifest supernal arrays of emanations of the virtue and knowledge of enlightening beings beyond all realms of desire, to dispel all craving for sensual enjoyment, to make it clear that all mundane routines are impermanent, to show that all celestial existence ultimately declines and passes away, to join with the enlightening beings bound for Buddhahood in one life in proclaiming the teaching of great knowledge called the appearance of descent from heaven into rebirth on earth, to take care of those matured together in that state of existence, and to enlighten those sent forth by Sheikh Yamuni when the time comes to be guided. At that time I will realize omniscience, the fulfillment of my aspiration, and when I have attained enlightenment, you will see me again, with the spiritual benefactor Manjushri. Now go back to Manjushri and ask him how an enlightening being is to learn and carry out the practice of enlightening beings, enter the sphere of universally good practice, undertake and carry it out, expand it, follow it, purify it, enter fully into it, and fulfill it. He will show you the real benefactor. Why? The best of vows of decillions of enlightening beings is Manjushri's, vast is the outcome of the practice of Manjushri, measureless is the accomplishment of vows of Manjushri, Ceaseless is Manjushri's achievement of the best of virtues of all enlightening beings, Manjushri is the mother of decillions of Buddhas, Manjushri is the teacher of decillions of enlightening beings, Manjushri is engaged in the perfection of all beings, widespread is the name of Manjushri in all worlds of the ten directions, Manjushri is the interlocutor in the assemblies of untold Buddhas, Manjushri is praised by all Buddhas, abiding in the knowledge of profound truth, Manjushri sees all things according to their true significance, Manjushri has ranged far into all modes of liberation, he is immersed in the practice of universally good enlightening beings. He is the progenitor of spiritual benefactors, who makes you grow in the family of the enlightened, causes you to establish roots of goodness, shows you the provisions for enlightenment, introduces you to true benefactors, immerses you in all virtues, establishes you in the network of universal vows causes you to hear of the accomplishment of all vows, shows the secrets of all enlightening beings, and has similarly practiced the wonder of all enlightening beings together with you in past lives. Therefore when you go to Manjushri, do not be faint-hearted, do not become weary in receiving instruction in all virtues. Why? All the spiritual benefactors you have seen, all the ways of practice you have heard, all the modes of liberation you have entered, all the vows you have plunged into, should all be looked upon as the empowerment of Manjushri, and Manjushri has reached the ultimate perfection. Then Sudhana paid his respects to Mithraya the enlightening being and went on. Manjushri then Sudhana, passing more than 110 cities, went to Samanamukha and stayed there thinking about Manjushri, wishing to see and meet with Manjushri. Then Manjushri extended his hand over a hundred and ten leagues and laid it on the head of Sudhana, who was standing in the city of Sumanamukha, and said, Good, good. Those without the faculty of faith, those who are weary or sluggish in mind, those who have not accumulated efforts, those whose vigor recedes, 
those who are satisfied with meager virtues, those imbued with only one root of goodness, those unskilled in carrying out practical vows, those who are not in the care of spiritual benefactors, those who are not minded by the Buddhas, cannot know this true nature, this principle, this sphere, this abode, they are unable to know, to fathom, to penetrate, to believe, to conceive, to know exactly, or to attain. Having caused Sudhana to see by means of his spiritual talk, having directed him, inspired him, gladdened him, imbued him with countless facets of truth, illumined him with the great light of infinite knowledge, led him into the endless mental command, presence of mind, concentration and super-knowledge of enlightening beings, plunged him into the sphere of universally good practice, and established him in his own place, Manjushri left the presence of Sudhana. The vow of practice of universal good then Sudhana, attending as many spiritual benefactors as atoms in a billion world universe, his mind having accumulated the provisions for omniscience, acting on the instructions of all spiritual benefactors with correct understanding, his mind equally attentive to all spiritual friends, his intellect in harmony with all spiritual friends without emotion, following the ocean of principles to the advice and instruction to all spiritual friends, filled with universal compassion, illumining all beings with universal love, physically blissful, abiding at peace in the vast liberation of enlightening beings, his equanimous vision attentive to all dimensions, having accomplished the ocean of virtues of all Buddhas, on the path of resolve of all Buddhas, strengthened by the energy of vigor of preparation for omniscience, his mind thoroughly dedicated to the will of all enlightening beings, comprehending the succession of all Buddhas of past, present, and future, awake to the ocean to principles of all enlightened teachings, following the ocean of principles of the wheels of teaching of all Buddhas, in the realm of manifesting reflections to life in all worlds, immersed in the principles to the vows of all enlightening beings, set out to carry on enlightening practice throughout all ages, seeing the realm of omniscience, having developed all the faculties of enlightening beings, aware of the path of omniscience, his intellect focused on all the principles of the reality realm, illumining the principles of all lands, following the course of beneficial action extending to all beings, shattering the precipitous mountains of spiritual impediments, according with the unimpeded nature to reality, abiding at peace in the liberation of enlightening beings containing the universal reality realm, investigating the realm of all Buddhas, empowered by all Buddhas, stood contemplating the realm of the enlightening being universally good. Having heard the name of the enlightening being universally good, his practice of enlightenment, the excellence of his vow, the excellence of basing his undertaking on the provisions for enlightenment, the excellence of his expertise in accomplishment, his conduct in the stage of universal good, his preparations for the stages, the excellence of his attainment, the speed of his attainment of the stages, his entry into the stages, his stabilization in the stages, his progress through the stages, his importance in the stages, his mastery of the stages, and his abiding in the stages, Sudhana, eager to see the enlightening being Samantabhadra, universally good, sat on a lotus seat of jewels facing the lion throne of the Buddha on the enlightenment side there filled with oceans of diamonds, with a mind as vast as space and free from all attachments, with perception of all lands well developed, with a mind having transcended all barriers and clingings, with a mind unimpeded, in the realm of non-obstruction in the midst to all things, with a mind freely pervading everywhere without hindrance, with a pure mind entering the realm of omniscience, with a well-ordered mind purified by observing the ornaments of the side to enlightenment, with a broad mind immersed in the ocean of all enlightened teachings, with a vast mind pervading all realms to beings to guide them to perfection, with an immeasurable mind purifying all Buddha lands, with an infinite mind reflected in the circles of all Buddhas, abiding indefatigably for all ages, until the ultimate realization of the power, expertise, and unique qualities of all Buddhas. Furthermore, to Sudhana, engaged in these meditations, there appeared ten signs prefiguring the vision of the enlightening being universally good, by virtue of the empowerment of all Buddhas having nourished his past roots of goodness, 
and by virtue of having past roots of goodness equivalent to those of the enlightening being universally good. What were those ten signs? All Buddha lands were purified by purification with the adornments of the sites of enlightenment of all Buddhas. All Buddha lands were purified by removal of all evils and miserable states and conditions inopportune for enlightenment. All Buddha lands were purified by purification of Buddha lands with the rays of spiritual lotus ponds. All Buddha lands were purified by cooling and refreshing the bodies and minds of all beings. All Buddha lands were purified by becoming made of jewels. All Buddha lands were purified by all the beings becoming adorned with the marks and embellishments of greatness. All Buddha lands were purified by formation of masses of all adornments. All Buddha lands were purified by all. The beings becoming kind, benevolent, and friendly to each other. All Buddha lands were purified by becoming arrayed with the adornments of sites of enlightenment. All Buddha lands were purified by all the beings becoming consciously absorbed in mindfulness of Buddha. These ten signs appeared foreshadowing the vision of the great enlightening being universally good. After that, ten great lights appeared, foreshadowing the manifestation of the great enlightening being universally good. What were the ten? In each atom of all worlds the network of all Buddhas shone. The auras of light of all. Buddhas emanated from each atom of all worlds, with hundreds of thousands of various colors, and pervaded the whole cosmos. Clouds of jewels manifesting reflections of all Buddhas emanated from each atom of all worlds and pervaded the cosmos. Multitudes of circles of flames of all Buddhas emanated from each atom of all worlds and pervaded the cosmos. Multitudes of all kinds of fragrant flowers, garlands, perfumes, and incenses emanated from each atom of all worlds and pervaded the cosmos radiating the light of the enlightening being universally good. Multitudes of lamps in the forms of all beings emanated from each atom of all worlds and pervaded the cosmos. Multitudes of figures of light beams in the forms of the bodies of all Buddhas emanated from each atom of all worlds and pervaded the cosmos showing the basic vows of all Buddhas. Oceans of multitudes of reflections of enlightening beings of all forms and appearances, representations of phantom bodies of all beings, fulfilling the wishes of all beings, emanated from each point of all worlds and pervaded the cosmos. These ten great lights appeared foreshadowing the manifestation of universally good. Then Sudhana, having seen these ten foreshadowing lights, had the opportunity to see the enlightening being universally good supported by the power of his own roots of goodness, a living manifestation of all Buddha teachings. Empowered by all Buddhas, immersed in the vows of the enlightening being universally good, in the presence of the realm of all Buddhas, having the power of certainty of the lofty realm of enlightening beings, perceiving the attainment of the light of omniscience in the sight of the enlightening being universally good, his senses directed toward vision of the enlightening being universally good, flooded with great energy for the vision of the enlightening being universally good, striving unremittingly in the search for the enlightening being universally good, with the sphere of his senses turned to all directions, with the body of an enlightening being entering the sphere of the eye of universal good, with a mind directed toward all Buddhas and aware of the enlightening being universally good in the presence of all Buddhas, with a will seeking unremittingly for the enlightening being universally good, inwardly perceiving the vision of the enlightening being universally good in all objects, with the eye of knowledge on the path of the enlightening being. Universally good, with a mind as vast as space, with a powerful resolve supported by indestructible universal compassion, with a vow to accompany the enlightening being universally good throughout all time, with purity of manner equally following the practice of the enlightening being universally good, abiding in knowledge based on the state of the enlightening being universally good, dwelling in the sphere of all those who realize thusness, he saw the enlightening being universally good sitting on a lion seat in the calyx of a great jewel lotus in front of Varokana Buddha, the perfectly enlightened one, in an ocean of enlightening beings, his body standing out among the whole assembly, unexcelled by any worldlings, looking over all the enlightening beings, his knowledge endless, his range insuperable, his sphere inconceivable, having arrived at equality of past, present and future and attained equality with all Buddhas. 
He saw clouds of light rays as numerous as atoms in all Buddha lands emanate from each of universally good spores and illumine all worlds throughout the space of the cosmos, relieving the pain of all beings. He saw as many auras of light as atoms in all Buddha lands emanate from universally good's body, increasing the ecstasy of all enlightening beings. He saw clouds of fragrant flames of various colors emanate from universally good's head and pores, pervading the audiences of all Buddhas and showering on them. He saw as many clouds of all kinds of flowers as atoms in all Buddha lands emanate from each of universally good's pores, filling the audiences of all Buddhas and showering on them. He saw as many clouds of all kinds of fragrant trees as atoms in all Buddha lands emanate from each of universally good's pores, adorning all universes throughout space with fragrant trees budding with inexhaustible aromatic powders and oils, showering on the audiences of all Buddhas. He saw clouds of all kinds of cloth emanate from every pore, covering all universes throughout space and decorating them. Continued, and too, 